Hello, and welcome to episode three of the Behind the Medal podcast. With me, Gary Damer. And me, Dean Smith. Hold tight for some begging. Yeah, quick one. As always, give us a like and subscribe and a rate and a comment and all that business on uh, your podcast platforms. Uh, give us a follow on Twitter at Behind the Medal Podcast. Yes, indeed I do. Uh, and before we start, we just have this short message. Warning. Warning. This episode contains swearing. So, if you don't like words any stronger than spanner or ragamuffin, then maybe this podcast isn't for you. Right, very good. You ready, Gary? Yep. Let's do this. Ding. Gary. <laughs> Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean, chatting along in a new podcast. Gary and Dean. Gary and Dean, and Gary's got hairy hands. We run around and see the world, try our flung tails, Dean's hair is curled. We talk some shit and play some games, for legal reasons some names are changed. Oh, sorry. Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean, chatting along on a new podcast. Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so, uh, where we left off last time, we had just completed the uh, Amsterdam Marathon. Yeah. You'd thrown up in a bin. Done that. Um, and so, uh, in our little tale, what happened next? We did the marathons and mm -hmm. we got a bit cocksure and we were sort of throwing our weight around a bit. We'd done two marathons and we thought we knew everything about it. Who them. do we think we are? Oh, God. Uh, and the word triathlon started getting bandied around, didn't it? It I, did. Someone brought that up and I can't remember how that all started. Probably Dan Dadigan. I think it was Dan blame for everything. Yeah. Uh, triathlon, so that was next on the agenda. Mm. We'd all sort of boxed off the running. We knew we were all fairly good at it. Um, so, yeah, we just decided a new challenge, triathlon. So we did the... Si uh, no, swim, bike, run. Swim. <laughs> in, yeah, in the right order. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get them the wrong way around. Jumping in a river with your bike. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did, yeah. And I, I, again, I can't really remember how that came about, but yeah, and then all of a sudden we'd booked one um, in Fanbridge, uh, which is down south, and it, where, but it was, it's Thames, isn't it? Because it was a tidal... We'll, we'll cover this later on, but we'd booked one. Yeah. So we had something to aim for. Not just... You say booked one, dead casual. We booked a half Ironman. Yeah. For the first one. I mean, that was... In hindsight, again, that was fucking stupid. Yeah. Our f very first triathlon. So for the, for the uninitiated, that's double an Olympic distance triathlon. So what, what are the credentials there? <sighs> I knew you were going to ask me that because <laughs> I don't know. The swim... In the swim, 1,500 metres. Shall I? I'm going to have to Google it. Have a Google. I'm going to guess, though, whilst you're Googling. The swim, I believe, is 1,500 metres. The cycle, I believe, is about 60 miles. That might be 56. No. Yeah, 60 miles. And then the run is a half marathon, so 13.1. Okay, so it's... Uh, do you want it in miles or kilometres? Uh, either. Okay, so the swim mm -hmm. is a 1.2-mile swim. Yep, so 1,500 metres, yep. Uh, a 56 mile bike ride yeah I said that as well tick and then a 13.1 mile run yeah at the end of it so that was that was we decided that would be a good idea for our first triathlon not doing the super sprints not doing the sprints no straight in straight in with a, the arrogance man yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it did lead us on to a whole world of triathlon shopping and yeah. triathlon sort of because it's not like running where you can just put on kicks mm -hmm. and just hit the streets yeah especially with the bikes it's it, it's it is a minefield trying to find a bike and you have to go through the bike fit and all yeah. that business it's a it's a proper faff there's a lot of stuff that goes around it isn't there yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's not an easier one the, the bike was i think was the first thing i bought and i literally googled i was i didn't have much cash at the time i literally googled cheapest road bike yeah entry level road bike and it was <laughs> 600 quid that, that breaking sweat. Yeah. I got mine on Black Friday, so I I, I got it online. How uh, much is it supposed to be yours? Yours is nice. I, man, I don't know. know. Is, I think it was like 1500 it was supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. I got a few shekels knocked off it. Nice. But when my, it was funny because at the time when my mum and dad were asking me, I was like, oh, it was only like 200 quid. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I better not tell them how much I spent on a bike. Oh, God. But I bought the bike 
and it got delivered to um, like some depot somewhere. Mm. So at the time, what I did is I hired a van to did go. You? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah. I hired a van to go and pick the bike up. <laughs> Um, so I drove the van to the uh, depot, collected the bike, stuffed it in the back of the van, got it home and sort of set it all up, put the pedals on and stuff like that. And then I threw it back in the back of the van mm -hmm. and then drove back to the van hire place with ah. the intention of then dropping the van off and cycling back home. Yep. So my first go on the bike was cycling from the van hire place to my house. How far? It was probably three miles. All right, yeah, not bad then. So not far. However, a road bike is a completely different kettle of fish, isn't it? Because Big time. I, like, I got on it. I had no idea how to change gears. The flappy I'd, gears. Yeah, I'd, I'd never seen them before. I, <laughs> I should have really Googled how to, how to ride a road bike. Because I, I, when I was a kid, I did loads of cycling on my little BMX, where right. it's dead easy. Shit. Wheelies, middle yeah, of the road. Yeah, all that gear. <laughs> so I got on my road bike, on the traffic in the yeah. middle of Manchester. Mate, it was terrifying because i couldn't change gear mm. and a road bike by the design of them they're so light yeah you know so a little tiny gust of wind mm. you, you you're all over the gap. i remember that when when first time i had to go on mine it was the weight distribution yeah. even when i was pressing down on the pedals yeah. with my obviously my feet like i was jolting all over the place yeah it is. physically moving the wheels about and st steering as well you yeah. just have to tap it and you, you know you're off it's like a I feel like saying race car, but not quite as dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm cycling through Manchester in, yeah. in first gear the whole way, <laughs> all over the road, panicking. It was a really bad idea. I definitely should have took it on the quiet I road. would have loved to have seen you sweating <laughs> on the thing. Did you have proper pedals, though? Because No, no, I... no, no. I, I had just normal standard pedals at that point. Well, because when I, when I got mine, I unpacked it all, like, like you said. I think I had to go to the depot, put it all together, and there was no pedals. Did you not have pedals in it? They didn't give me a damn pedal, son. Well, you've been mugged. No wonder you got a cheat one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did it come with a bike seat? Or is that how you like no it? No wheels, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I literally put it together. No no pedals. I couldn't I couldn't use it. That's it was weird. Not, not even like a little shelf to, to put my feet on. Yeah. It just went straight down. And I had to, I got it off a website that shall remain nameless. And I, so I rung up and was like, yeah, I rasped. I can't, I can't use it. And luckily, I mean, <laughs> it did say on the, the thing that there was no pedals included. I just had not looked at it. Uh, um, but so I bought some. And the first you know one. Why sell a bike without pedals? That annoys it. me because it's like a bed without a mattress. It yeah. pisses me off. You don't Probably. buy a car without an engine. What yeah. are you fucking doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but so I bought, I bought some. And, but the first ones I bought were those ones where you'd, it's like a cage for your foot. Right. Just because I didn't know how serious I was going to take this this thing. Yeah. And so these were the cheapest ones. I think I went to Halfords or whatever. Shout out There's a running theme with you, isn't there? Everything's the cheapest <laughs> you can find. Uh, I was going to wait for you to do the tight Yorkshire bastard joke then, but... Uh, I know, well, I feel like I've overdone it. Nah. All right, you tight Yorkshire bastard. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a story about your... Um, <laughs> equipment. Yeah, it makes a, a nice change because there's no bodily functions <laughs> on this on this podcast. I don't think. But yeah, so I I bought the bike. I, uh, once I'd got a bit better at learning how to change gear and all that, mm -hmm. I bought the clip-in pedals. Yeah. So basically, the tiny little pedals. You buy the shoes that have an attachment that basically just clip into the pedal. Yeah. Um. Again, I think I try and do things. I rush into things. Yeah. So I knew. Uh, a group of lads at the Royal Mail post office near us at the time. And uh, they were doing a bike ride from Manchester to Blackpool to raise money for the Christie charity. So I signed up. I said, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll do that with you. Um, we were all in the car park. This was my first ever experience at using the, the, the cleats, <laughs> the calls, the, the clipping pedals. <laughs> <laughs> so, But they, they, just before you carry on, they are quite, you've got to twist in and out, haven't you? It's not just a case of, it's not like putting a shoe on. Yeah. There is a technique to it. There is. Yeah. And because they were new, they were still fairly stiff. Yeah. So you've got to, sort of, when you, yeah, you've got to twist your foot to unclip from the pedal. Mm -hmm. So there was about, 10, 15 post off, postmen in the yard and there was a guy who was going to be like following us down in the in the van. He was like as a support driver. He was giving us like a safety briefing. So right. he was like, you know, I'll stick together. Don't leave any man behind. Don't blah, run blah, a red blah. light. All that, yeah. <laughs> all that gear. As he was talking, I was sort of, I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> Clipped into my <me> pedals. 
<laughs> I couldn't get the bastards <laughs> off. But the worst, the worst feeling in the world because you sat on a bike, just basically just fall into the side. <laughs> So this guy is giving a really serious safety briefing. Next thing you hear, this massive clatter, and I'm on the deck with my feet still in the pedals. <laughs> I had to get someone to help me out. It was, it wasn't the best start. I'd love to have been fly on the wall there and just slow it down, and then just see that your face. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> just as you're heading towards the concrete. <laughs> but um, that's not the story I thought you were going to tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, which of your own? Do you remember when we did the first sort of long ride out that we did as a team? Um, was, it was just me and you actually, and we went from um, my uh, dad's house in North Leeds to Bolton Abbey. Oh, yeah. do you remember this? <laughs> that again is about uh, twenty miles, so ret- so a return journey is about forty miles, and so we decided to go and do this. We took a pat lunch and all that gear, um, but you saw it's a lot of roads uh, before you get to this nice little country road, and so we dived onto, onto this country road for the last I don't know ten miles or something down to Bolton Abbey, uh, North Yorkshire, and. Um, uh, about halfway down this path, there was loads of sheep. Do you remember? Yeah. Loads of sheep rushing towards us. And we were like, what the fucking hell's all this? <laughs> and so when they saw us, they scarpered back the other way. As we got the other way, we we're still cycling. As we got uh, uh, another half mile or so, the sheep had seemingly fucked off. But then there was other cyclists coming from the other direction. So we'd penned them in. Mm. So I get off the bike and these other two blokes get off the bike and we start to have a little talk about how <laughs> we should get... <laughs> how we should get these sheep back into this farmer's field. And then I just heard this almighty crunch from behind me. And sure enough, there's fucking Gary with his wheels in the air in this bush because he'd forgotten how to pull off his fucking clips. Do you remember that? I do. It's so hard. It's such a weird technique to twist your foot and get out. But it made me laugh because I was like, oh, look, I was making new friends in the countryside. And then there's my special pal. Just there. Sweating and swearing in the bush. I'm going to lie down in the tree. (laughs) (laughs) You cut your arm to shit and all sorts. It was great. I like to think that they thought you were sexually excited by sheep. (laughs) And so we stopped to to help these sheep. And then you've just thought, right, abort. And just (laughs) dived into the bushes for some uh, solitude. Well, we were in Leeds, so it is a possibility. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so it is uh, the middle of 2015. Um, we've uh, committed to doing a uh, half Ironman triathlon. And so we basically just trying to get a cluster. We're trying to do as much swimming as we can. We're, the running we're basically ignoring. But we say to ourselves, right, the bike, if we can nail the bike, get the bike in a good time, then that's going to set us up well for the rest of the race, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we have a look at uh, biking events in the country. And now that year, 2015, was the first time that they'd done the Tour de Yorkshire. The Tour de France had been the year before and set off in Yorkshire and had been this whole big thing and it was great. So they did the Tour de Yorkshire. So we signed up for the Sportive. Yeah. Uh, Me, Dean and Dan Dad, all three of us. Yeah. There was three distances. There was like a long, uh, like a medium and then a small. Yeah. Dan Dad is a proficient cyclist. He loves it. So he did the long distance. Mm -hmm. We did the middle ground, which was about how long? About 80 miles, I think. 80 miles, yeah, which long enough. Yeah, because um, Dan's was 110. I think so, yeah. Was it? Because we just had a little Google, and it, the, the the distances have reduced, I think. They definitely, I, I, remem- I remember it as a fact, because the, the first year, as you say, was our year. Yeah. The, the year after it, they, they definitely changed it because yeah. of how tough that year was. That's mm. not me just bigging our sends up. It was a re- it was a tough route, yeah. Because it includes all the hills from the Tour de France. Now these guys are obviously professional cyclists. Well, and I'm I'm on a six hundred pound fucking bike. They're they're yeah with no pedals. Yeah, with no pedals, <laughs> just shouting into the <laughs> into the Yorkshire <laughs> air. Uh, but these guys are on fucking twenty bags of sand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. vehicles. Yeah, and uh, I just think. It was too tough. The yeah, first one. I yeah. think so. Yeah, because it was the hills, man. Oh my god. Yeah. Some of these, I, I I had to get off a number of times and just push the bike up because I physically couldn't cycle. I didn't have the strength in my legs. There was so many of those those hills where I was searching. I was desperate for there to be another gear on my bike, yeah. lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I could, I mean, people were walking past, old people were walking past me and I was cycling, yeah. swearing. It, <laughs> yeah. Was, it was so, t- it was the, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. It, I was just going to say that. It's the, it's the toughest thing I've ever done. And it, the 
because it rained for about the first two hours as well. Oh, so it did it. Fuck me. Really wet and miserable. Because they cancelled one of the hills, do you remember? Because someone had uh, come yeah. off their bike. It was a downward hill. Uh, York, uh, anyone who knows uh, Leeds and, and Yorkshire, it was Otley Shevin. So it's a big old hill and someone had come off the bike there. So I hope they were all right. Didn't I? I'm sure we checked up on that, actually. Um, but that's how, purely because of the water yeah. on, on the, the surface roads. Um, but bear in mind, we were, uh, we did it uh, in about seven hours, I want to say. Yeah, I mean, it felt like twice that, but yeah. Oh, it absolutely did. But this is seven hours worth of um, of, of event. Dan had set off uh, an hour and a half before us because he was doing the long run. So he's on an eight and a half hour thing. Mm -hmm. So you never guess what happened. Um, yeah, so I was riding up this uh, hill. It was yep. a big Calm old calf. hill. Calm calf rocks in Ilkley it was. Is that what it was? Yep. All the way through the race, I'd, I'd been cramping up um, just my thighs and my calves and it, was, it wasn't it was nice. So up the, going up this hill, I had to jump off my bike and just stretch out. <clears throat> um, and to be fair, like the people of Leeds were amazing because this geezer, the neighbour had come out and he held my bike and he helped me stretch the cramp off. And as I was stretching, I heard a clatter behind me. Yeah. I turned around and it was Mr. Dean Smith. <laughs> he, he must have been, I don't know how far behind, but he'd eventually caught up um, he'd cramped up as well, so he jumped off his bike, threw his bike on the floor. At exactly the same spot. Yeah, and he hadn't clocked me at this point, so I just went, Dino, he saw me, and we must have, I felt like we ran towards each other in slow motion and made a load of noise. <laughs> this poor geezer stood there holding my bike. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd had a, an amazing little moment of meeting up three miles from the end of the race after all these miles we'd just covered. I needed that though. Oh man, yeah. that, 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 my head was well and truly falling off. Just with the hills, I think. Yeah, the hills, that was the one for me. It was just cramp. Mm. It was just so tough. So then we set off. We joined up, we hooked up together, and we set off again together. Now, a little bit further down the road, I cramped up. I had to jump off my bike again, and you carried on. So I'll let you take over what happened next. Right, yeah. So Gary just said there that we'd met up about three miles before the end of the... Um, before the end of the course. It was a little bit further than that. Cow and calf uh, rocks in Ilkley is a bit, is a little bit further, but not, not much further. So Gary cramps up again, top of that hill. I carry on and um, I'm just pedaling away, pedaling away. Now what my kit, when I, um, when I do any of these uh, events uh, is I have a black um, uh, tri vest, basically a triathlon vest uh, and white tube socks, sports socks pulled right up. <laughs> I don't know why it's comfortable. I've got them on now, in fact. <laughs> Um, but Dan always identifies me as wearing that. He's like, oh, I see you've got your kit on again, Dean. There we go. And we, I was about three miles. It was at that point, about three miles away from Roundy Park to finish. And I just heard him. But I heard him. He was talking to this uh, to this dude, and he just pulls up alongside me. All right, Dean. All after Amazing. eight hours worth of him cycling, he found me. I, I, so close to the finish line. Yeah. And... Then me and him, like I, my head had well and truly fallen off at this point. He was fine. He wasn't blowing at all. He's a machine. And we carried on for a little while. And then who was who turned up then as well? Well, I, I saw you, your socks because <laughs> obviously I'm behind you at this point. I saw your socks. I hadn't clocked Dan. So yeah. I, I caught up to you and you were going, Gary, Gary, it's Dan, it's Dan. <laughs> and we both, we were all just like, oh, ah! yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Out of, out of all those people. Mm hmm out of all our distances we were separated yep. to meet up and we've got an amazing photo which will stick on Twitter. Yes. Oh yeah. At behind the medal. <laughs> <laughs> of us three crossing the line together holding hands. Amazing. Unbelievable. From a collective uh, quick maths uh, 22 hours worth of event seven for me seven for you eight for Dan yeah. Dad we ended up Crossing the finish line together. The, ch the chances of us three oh. meeting up like that. Slim to none, son. Because it was great because that advert was around at the time where it would be going like, da 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 da, -da this, this much, da 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 da, this much. Yeah. But this moment, priceless. priceless. And that, that was, th for me, I was going, this is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was the Tour de Yorkshire. And it surprisingly didn't put us off. We carried on. We carried on towards the, the triathlon. Yeah. Yeah. I th are we going to cover the travel in, in in a bit more detail at another point or? yeah we will but yeah. there is one more thing i want to say because you said before about there not being any bodily functions in this um uh, episode i'm going to take that baton off your son oh shit. i'm going to do it myself remember the time you said dino um as we were training for the uh for the, <laughs> for the triathlon salford keys do this great swim thing you turn up 
you pay your, your cash, you stick a wetsuit on, you swim around the keys. Yeah, you swim, it's called. It's you awesome. Swim. Sweet, shout out to you swim. Um, you said come down and do it. Great, because I, I, I mean, I, I've done how many triathlons I've done. What are we, what are we on now? Six or seven, yeah. and all have done with breaststroke. But I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, trying my best to just pick up this freestyle as much as possible. So I went down with Gary, um, and it's not particularly cold. It's not particularly. But I'm not a good, not a great swimmer. Mm. I float with style basically. <laughs> but I was trying my best. I was coming down one of the. One of the uh, one of the sides there, Gary was off. He he, he dusted me early doors, and I got a whole heap. I got a whole heap of river water in my mouth, <laughs> and I was as I was trying to to breathe. And I I instead of spitting it out, I swallowed it. Don't oh, know why. Oh no! There was fucking cigarette butts in there. There was all kinds of shite. You probably swallowed a whole rake of police evidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the autopsy on me is going to be a barrel of laughs. There's a fucking car number plate in it. <laughs> Solving crimes from 20 years ago. <laughs> but I took a whole lung full of this water in. Um, and it, it wasn't straight away, but about as I rounded the corner, I had to stop and because I, I felt this gurgling. I thought it was a burp, but oh. I threw up <gasps> it, everywhere. While you were swimming? Yeah, into the river, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's horrible enough throwing up when you're on dry land. Yeah. And you've got your feet planted. And like you were saying last week, we can you can do some spitting. <laughs> <laughs> but I was there, pet, like, trying to fucking stay afloat. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Kevin and Perra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every, every triathlon we've ever done, I've breaststrokes all the way around. And it's a strong breaststroke because I'm getting out of the water only not, not long after you do. And yours is a good um, freestyle. But what it is, is again, we'll cover this. Um, it's not ideal because with freestyle, you barely use your legs. Whereas I'm kicking like fuck. I'm kicking like a donkey. And I, so I my, don't know how you did do that whole swim for the breaststroke. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. I do the, I do the, you know, bobbing in and out of the water. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> that was a great image. <laughs> All right, so now for a quick word from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Gary Scott. Are you out of the country a lot? Are you serving a 10 stretch? Do you find your wife physically repulsive? Well, no worries, because I can fuck your wife. One size fits all. I promise she won't feel a thing. Call the number below, day or night, and I'll be there. Bang! And your wife is banged. So, as you guys know, we are training currently, myself and Gary, for the Madrid Marathon. Uh, we are here uh, in the sort of towards the end of uh, February. The Madrid Marathon is uh, the end of April. Um, Every time we come to record, we're going to do a run, however long or short. Uh, but today we decided to do our longest run to date, uh, which was 12 miles. Mm. Uh, I live in South Manchester. We didn't particularly get a particularly interesting route, but we ran the long way around into town, basically, and then just redoubled our steps for 12 miles. How was it, Gary? Uh, I had a bad one today. Mm. Because we set out, and for the first, it was making me laugh, because for the first six or seven miles, we were quite chatty, yeah. cracking gags. <laughs> And then you mentioned something about a pizza. And then I I realized I was really hungry mm. as soon as he said that. So from like seven to 12 miles, I was really struggling because yeah. I, I was really hungry and I was just getting lower and lower and lower. And I, we got quieter and quieter. And we, but I think by the end, we just stopped talking. Yeah, but that's normal, I think, on those on those long runs because you have to preserve energy at some point. Yeah, and do you know what? The amount of times I always say to me, I'm going to bring some change out of me on my car yeah. just so I can stop in and get a a chocolate bar or something if I need one, but I just keep forgetting. But that would have been ideal. But it, it was funny because you were saying you were battling with your legs. Yep. And I was battling with my head. So yeah. we, we both just very, we both went very um, <laughs> inside <laughs> ourselves and yeah. very quiet. And... Well, I always think there's one of three things that could, I mean, there's a variety of things that can go wrong, but for me anyway, it's either my head, mm. um, my uh, legs, which it was today, or my lungs. For some reason, when it's um, if it's cold or even if it's very warm, sometimes I just feel like I can't get enough oxygen. Yeah. In. Do you have the same thing? I do when it's cold. Yeah, my, it's like my chest is rattling. Yeah. Yeah. Today it was it was just hunger. I think just like I'd, I'd not eaten enough, not prepared well. Yeah. Uh, maybe a bit of water as well, because you you said a couple of times as well. Oh, we can call it a ten mile. You know, no heroes, our usual. Yeah. But I, I re again, I'd made a promise. I thought we need to do. We said twelve, so we need to do it. Yeah. We had to walk for sixty seconds. 
Yeah, but that's again, that's that's not bad. I, I, I said to you as we were coming in, it's the if if we'd have stopped and done ten, um, sensible ten miles is still a very good distance. But the fact that you pushed through it mm. and did the twelve, that's good training because those last two miles are worth so much more than just being comfortable. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We got in and then we raided Dean's cupboards for every yeah. kind of scrap of food <laughs> I could find. <laughs> Gary was laid there like uh, Henry VIII, just covered in food <laughs> and grease. Um, but no, that's all right. You know, we, we were out for nearly two hours. I think it was one hour 50 it took us right. to do uh, 12 miles, which isn't bad for a training run. Yeah, no, Especially that's Especially because we were, we were chatting a lot to start with, which, yeah. so you're losing quite a lot of pace there. Um, but yeah, it was my legs. I mean, in the last five days I've done, uh, that's 30 miles I've done. So I did a two with you, then I did a 10, then I did six yesterday and then 12 today. So it's, there's no wonder that my legs hurt a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So getting to that um, that point, it's about seven, no, it was a bit later for me, it was about eight miles. I was like, oh shit. It was, it was, it, I could pinpoint, it was like eight miles I yeah. think, where it was like, oh God. Yeah. And it was a very quiet run home then. Yeah. But that's, that's all right. I don't see any, I don't see any dangers with that. No, it's, it, it's, it, that's the bonus of running with you because if I'd have been on my own, mm. I'd have probably flagged the cab down or something. <laughs> yeah, I've done that before. <laughs> got on the tram. I got on. The, <laughs> I got. On, I was doing a run once. I, it was probably about fifteen and sixteen miler, and I ran past a tram stop, and it just got to the point where I was going, "Should I just dive on the tram?" <laughs> obviously, I didn't have any money on me, so I'd, I'd jib the tram. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they'll get you. I know. They'll come get you, son. They didn't that day though. Aha. To pay is to fail. <laughs> <laughs> but about halfway around, uh, or rather halfway through Gary's um, low blood pressure bit, he said, oh, it's, uh, I think it's a uh, salty potato. Uh, it's like the salty potato <laughs> thing. Um, and <laughs> I know exactly what that means, <laughs> the salty potato <laughs> thing. The listeners of this illustrious podcast won't. Do you want to tell them? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was on a, another cycling sportive that was just me and Dan. Um, it was in London, mm -hmm. and I can't even remember where it went, but it was a 120-mile bike ride, so it was a long old way. Nice. And they had feed stations at certain distances or whatever. And again, I was, I was really flagging. This was quite deep into it. And there was a station, and under this gazebo, they had a table, they had a massive bucket of like potatoes new potatoes chopped in half and then they had a massive bucket of salt and i turned to dan i said dan what, what's going on here <laughs> talk me through this and he just went salted potatoes <laughs> <laughs> i should say dan is from london he's not welsh and also he's mugged you right off there you wanted more information than salted potatoes and so basically you get a potato you dip it in the salt fire it in your mouth right <laughs> so i did it sort of dubious, not too sure what this experience was going to... It was unbelievable. <laughs> it was like, do you know when Popeye eats spinach? Yeah, yeah. And you, you can see his muscles bulging. Boing, boing. It was like that. Was... I could physically feel the improvement it was having on my body. It was the maddest thing Mental. in the world. It was like my body was going, that is exactly the two things that I need right now. Yeah. Solid potatoes. <laughs> so halfway through that run there, yeah. Dean was going, oh, are you all right? just need salted potatoes <laughs> that was it <laughs> so yeah we, we came in and raided his <laughs> salty potatoes <laughs> quick question though um was this an official stop station on this sportive <laughs> or did you just eat potatoes covered in cocaine <laughs> i hope it was an official one <laughs> if not that would maybe explain why i've never been able to reach that high again <laughs> <laughs> Not only did you finish the uh, sportif, you went straight to a disco. <laughs> Gary's there with his shirt off. I got some salty potatoes, me, mate. <laughs> I've not slept since. <laughs> Okay, so um, after the roaring success that was uh, Justin Timberlake's um, edition last week, uh, sent over a remix of his Senorita, turned it to Gary Damer. It's brilliant, wasn't it? Awesome. Um, well, he liked it. He said he sounded really lovely on the... He did sound lovely. I was I was particularly impressed at his vocal talents. Oh, well, yeah, he thanks you kindly. <laughs> um, but I got another one. No way, he's been back in touch again. He's been back in touch. Wow, he's got a lot of spare time, Justin, hasn't he? Do you know what? He's got a lot of spare time, and I think he's a bit infatuated with a certain someone. Well, he's only human, isn't he? He's got eyes in his fucking head, hasn't he? Not made of fucking wood, is he? <laughs> Do you want to hear it? Yeah, absolutely. 
This is called Sweaty Back. <laughs> Bringing sweaty back. Yeah. The mother runners don't know how to act. Yeah. He thinks he's special with his fanny pack. Yeah. I wanna lick him and his sweaty back. Yeah. Take him to the bridge. Gary, babe. Uh -huh. You see these shackles, Gary, I'm your slave. Uh -huh. I'll let you whip me if I misbehave. Uh -huh. It's just that no one makes me feel this way. I think he's got a bit of a crush on you, mate. I think he needs locking up. <laughs> <laughs> he's changed his tune, though. Last week, he was slagging you off. Now, he wants you to get naked. Yeah, told you. He's not made of wood, mate. Absolutely not. <laughs> Okay, it is time for your weekly quiz. Dean, mm. uh, let's just have a look at the scores, what you've got so far. <laughs> uh, zero, you got your on zero points so far. Today's the day. Yeah, let's see. Uh, as always, bonus points available. Oh, no, there isn't any bonus points available. Sorry. No, oh, tease. Just, just the questions. Okay, question number one. Okay. How much time, on average, does a person spend on the toilet in a lifetime? Oh. I want this in years. In years? Yeah. Uh, years... Five years. Oh, you're close. Ooh. Three years. It's not really that close. <laughs> well, in the grand scheme of it. Um, this is always, always makes me laugh. I mentioned this before, but when they have a little aside, it just goes in brackets, maybe more for people with bladder issues. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I double that at least. Right, yeah, on the weekend you yeah. double that. But maybe, like two of them years are not actually on the toilet, just like <laughs> in my trousers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I reckon that's probably more now though, because like when I go, when I if I go for a sit down wee, treat myself, right? I take my phone. Wait, I'll can I look. can I pick you up on that? You have go a on. sit down wee every so often, yeah? Do you? Yeah, treat myself. Why not? Have a little sit down, bit of me time. Watch the look at some news. I don't know. I mean, you've got a sofa. Why do you need to go to the toilet to do that? Just change the scenery. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. Uh, this one's another Guinness World Record for you. Okay. Uh, most balloons blown up by one guy using just his breath in one hour. How many? <laughs> um, oh, 100. 910. 910? In an hour, using just his breath. It's good going. Yeah. The guy apparently had to go and see doctors for advice because he kept passing out <laughs> while he was trying. <laughs> well, he had too much oxygen in his head or something. Yeah. I once did that in an audition. I, uh, the character is supposed to have like a, a, some sort of seizure. Um, it's for casualty. It's not like it wasn't for something <laughs> random, like a phone advert. <laughs> but no, was, I, I, had to, I had to have a seizure. And as part of sort of trying to act this in the audition, I was 19 and impressionable. I just took loads of big breaths as if I was freaking out. Uh, and I nearly fainted in, in the audition. They're like, oh, it's brilliant. Oh, it's <laughs> it's brilliant. And I got the job. Did you get it? Yeah, I got Amazing. the job. Amazing. Amazing. Congratulations. Nice one. Casualties, Dean Smith there. Tale from, <laughs> uh, from Dean. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of that, 910. That's loads, man. <clears throat> uh, right, question number three. Mm -hmm. What is unusual about the reproductive system of a male snake? Um, he doesn't have a penis. No, he's got two knobs. <gasps> a snake has two knobs. Where? Uh, what? Like, do, is the one like regular place, and then the one no, like both the small of his back? Or? No. <laughs> 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 they're both together. But listen to this as well. Some snakes, mm -hmm. right? Each penis has two tips. What? So that's four helmets. <laughs> It's like a bike shop. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's time for... 
Ginger, Ginger wisdom. wisdom. Ginger wisdom. Ha new jingle for this. Yeah, it's nice. I like yeah, it. Yeah, some choral work. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> um, we should layer that some more. Just, just be like a thousand Vietnamese children screaming <laughs> Ginger Wisdom by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> be like my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to conclude, uh, here is Ginger Wisdom. I have two inspirational running quotes for you. And I want to know uh, just what you think. Okay. So the first one, running is the greatest metaphor for life because you get out of it what you put into it. Nah. You're not having it? No. Why so, not? Running is like the greatest metaphor for life because you get out of it what you put into it. Yeah. But <laughs> the thing is there, you could change it from running to anything. Hoovering is the greatest <laughs> metaphor of life. You get out of it what you put into it. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. That could be anything. But isn't it more about you have to work very hard at running? If you can't just... like yeah, with but you have to work up hard at hoovering, otherwise you're going to miss bits. <laughs> if, I, if I was hoovering and didn't do under the table, just did around it, yeah. I'm not going to have a good life, am I? Whereas I'm, if I'm efficient in life I'm a, and I'm efficient in hoovering, I'm going to have a lovely time. Wicked, excellent. Thanks, thanks for that. Uh, do, do you know? Do you know who said that? Do you know whose quote that was? Is it James Dyson? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Uh, similar though. Oprah Winfrey. Oh, is she a runner? Is she? I don't know. I don't know. She might just be uh, talking about it. I think when you get that much money, you can say shit like that. What, say whatever you like. It. Yeah. You can say whatever you like. Yeah. When I become a millionaire, I'm mm. going to go around going, hoovering is like a <laughs> metaphor for life. And people are going to go, oh my Ooh. God, that is brilliant. Yeah. Uh, so, Fuck off, Oprah. Thank you. Uh, the second one, <laughs> um, only those who risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Because you've got a, you've got a test... No way, that's not the word. You've got to try the new stuff to mm -hmm. find out if you like it or not, if you're any good. It's like me with running. I have got into it, found out I'm quite good at it, found out it's changed my life, but I wouldn't have known that if I'd have never have tried it. But then even if you can boil that, that's, that's, that works that, but even as a metaphor to boil it down to a, a sort of more simplistic level, today, um, we did 12 miles, we nearly stopped, mm -hmm. but only those who risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. So it, just taking it on base surface level, um, we tried to do 12 and we did do 12. And yep. so our training is, is, is further than we were, we were going to do. Say it to me one more time. Okay. You ready? Yeah. I'm going to get close to the mic for this. I'm going to whisper it. Okay. Only those who risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. Only those who risk hoovering under the table... <laughs> can find out how clean under the table can be. How many toenail clippings are under the table? Yeah. Do you know who said that one? Go on. Peter Andre. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, T.S. Eliot. Is that the guy off Love Island? For fuck's <laughs> sake, Gary. <laughs> Ginger wisdom, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So there you have it, the end of the uh, third episode of Behind the Medal. Yep, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's a goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Bye-bye. ta -ra.